right, so today I'm going to be trying out our new Lightboard Studio. This is how I hope to be making some videos for you for class that you can watch so we don't have to do too many boring derivations during class. So these videos are important, so I hope that you watch them. Um, basically today, what I want to concentrate on is how we can get the equations, the kinematic equations for one dimensional motion when you have constant acceleration. We actually do this using um, integration, but it's fairly simple integration. So hopefully if you had some calculus in high school or um, took 131 or 109, um, this will look somewhat familiar to you. So basically what we start off with is the um, acceleration is a constant. All right, so we're going to use A as the symbol for our acceleration and just think of it as a number. It's some sort of constant. It could be a variety of different values. Uh, we don't really need to know that right now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to write the definition of acceleration. Um, you might think of this as instantaneous acceleration. It's going to be the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. So now we have a is dv dt. And what I'm going to do is a process that's in math class, we might call the separation of variables. Um, and you technically we're really solving a differential equation. So you can feel like, hey, I know how to solve differential equations if they're pretty simple. I'm going to, um, as we say, you separate the variables. So I'm going to multiply both sides by dt so that I have the time on one side and dv indicates velocity on the other side. The dt's, whenever I see a differential like that, dt, dx, whatever it might be, I think I need to integrate. So I'm going to integrate both sides. Now on this side with I have a dt, the dt indicates I'm in integrating over time. So I'm going to start at time equals zero and go to some arbitrary time t. Now on the other side where I have the velocity, my limits of integration for the velocity have to be similar or, or correspond to my limits for time. So the lower limit for velocity has to be the velocity it had at t equals zero. And typically we call that v naught. That's the initial velocity. The velocity it had at some arbitrary time, we can just call v. So if I integrate both sides, starting with a dt, I, I get a times t, and I'm going to evaluate it at my limits, t and 0. On the other side, I integrate dv, and similarly, I'm going to get v. I'll evaluate it at v naught and v. So when I put in my limits, I evaluate these expressions at my limits of t and 0. On the, this side, I get at. And on this side, I get v minus v naught. And so as I rearrange this, I can say v is equal to v naught plus at. This is one of my important equations. Basically, it's saying that in a situation where I have a constant acceleration, the velocity can be found at any time. The things that I need to know in order to find that is what is the initial velocity, what is the acceleration, and at what time am I interested in finding the velocity. That would give me values to put in here for v naught, a, and t, and then I could calculate the velocity. So this is the expression for velocity when you have a constant acceleration. Now we're going to use that and find v is v naught plus a t and now we're going to integrate one more time because we know the definition of velocity is its dx dt. So dx dt 
is the definition of velocity. And once again, I'm going to rearrange my expressions and um, integrate so that I can come up with an expression. What I'm going to get is x as a function of time, which is basically the position of the object at some time t, similarly to how we found the expression for velocity at some time t. So I'm going to just get rid of the v because these are the two sides that I'm really interested in. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by dt so that I've separated my variables. I'm going to integrate from 0 to t. And on the right-hand side, I'm integrating x. And I'm going to go from x0 to some arbitrary x. Keep in mind, this is the initial position, x0, that corresponds to the position when t is 0. So these limits on top and bottom correspond to each other. Let's do the right-hand the right -hand side for me first. And that's integrating dx, because that one's easier. I just get x. I'm going to evaluate it at x0 and x. On the other side, when I'm integrating over time, I get v0 t plus 1 half at squared. And those are evaluated at t and 0. When I evaluate both of these sides at their limits, I get v0 t plus 1 half at squared is equal to x minus x naught. I'm going to write it up here so we can see it a little bit more clearly. You can see that I'm not used to my light board because I'm standing behind what I'm writing. Hopefully as the semester progresses, I'll get a little bit more comfortable with this. So what we ended up with there is an expression for position as a function of time. I drew it too high. Sorry about that. Let's, uh, I'll bring it down a little bit. So similarly to how I could use the expression for velocity, I can also use this expression to find position of my object at any time. All that I need to know is what is my initial position, my initial velocity, and my acceleration. And then I just choose the time that I'm interested in. So I'm going to rewrite my expression for velocity. Oops. And so these are the two expressions that can give me position and velocity at any time in a situation with constant acceleration. Now, one of the things that I'll maybe leave for you to do is what happens if we eliminate time? Well, what you could do is you could take this expression and solve for t and then substitute into the position expression. I'm going to save you some time, and you could do that on your own if you want to uh, practice your algebra. We get another expression, v, not, v squared minus v naught squared is equal to 2ax minus x naught. So these three expressions are the basic expressions that we would use any time we had a problem with constant acceleration. So what we're going to do is we're going to see how we would do that in an example. So let me just clear the board a little so we can get working on this problem. Because I want to sort of, I want to give you an example of how we can use these expressions when we come to a problem. All right, so here's a specific problem. It says a car enters the highway and accelerates from rest 
at a rate of 2.4 meters per second squared for 12 seconds. We're asked to find how far does the car travel in those 12 seconds and what is its velocity at the end of those 12 seconds. So the first thing I think about is my expressions that we just got through integration. I had x is it equal to x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared and v is equal to v naught plus a t. Now these are very general expressions, but what I want you to think about is how I can make them tailored to my particular problem. And what I mean by that is your problem has a specific value for your initial position, your initial velocity, and your acceleration. And if we put in those numbers into these expressions, then we have expressions that specifically are applied to the problem that we're looking at. So if I'm looking at this problem, sometimes I have to sort of read between the lines to figure out my values. It says the car is entering the highway, and so really what we can do is we could just say, well, we'll say from the moment it starts accelerating, the moment it starts entering the highway, we'll call that the initial position and we'll let that be zero. We're able to put our initial position in a problem wherever we want to. So we can often make it zero, but sometimes it won't make sense and we'll give it another value. In this case, it does make sense to let it be zero. Now, as I read further along, I say that I see that it starts at rest. And that might be easy to miss, but what they're really telling me is that the initial velocity is zero. And finally, it says that it's accelerating at a rate of 2.4 meters per second squared. Oh, that's the acceleration. So, sorry about that, I went over, but you, you know what the acceleration is. So now I can write my expressions for this particular problem pretty easily. X is equal to X naught, which is zero. So I'm not going to even write the zero down. Well, I could write it down for now to help us out. Plus V naught T, well, the initial velocity is zero, plus one half the 2.4 times the t squared. So more simply, I could write this as 1.2 times t squared. Now this is the expression that really applies to our particular problem. Similarly, if I look at the velocity expression and think about my initial velocity and my acceleration, I could find that the velocity can be written as 2.4 times t because my v naught is zero. Now, how am I gonna use those expressions to answer the question? This question is pretty straightforward because it's asking, first of all, how far did it go in 12 seconds? It wants to know its position after 12 seconds have passed. So we could think of it as x with the t equal to 12, and so it's gonna be 1, 1.2, sorry, that's just times 12 squared. And I worked this out already, and that's 172.8 meters. So that is how far it traveled in 12 seconds. For the velocity, I'm thinking of using the velocity expression, but letting t equal 12. And so it's 2.4 times 12. And so that value for the velocity is, is 28 0.8 meters per second. And so that is how we can find the value for the velocity and the distance, well, how far it traveled, its, its position really, at 12 seconds. So hopefully this is a good starter for you to think about how we actually came up with those expressions for constant acceleration, but then also how you might use them in a problem. I would recommend that every time you do one of these problems, you write these two equations down. It'll help you memorize them because it's easier if they're in your head and you don't have to look them up constantly. 
Then work on making them specific for your problem by putting in the correct values for initial position, initial velocity, and acceleration. Then you get expressions like we did right here. So hopefully you found that helpful. And this is our first video in the Lightboard Studio. Hopefully I'll get better about not standing behind my writing.